Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, we are live here on YouTube this morning. Um, we are doing the three steps to creating a thriving art business. There are actually four steps, but the three steps are the really important ones. So here is the three steps, right? You need a list. Why do you need a list? Well, a list is really important because if you're on social media, social media is like this um, really loud place where everybody is vying for attention. And you can get lost easily. But once you get people over to your website, and they begin to share their details with you, you are able to really create the conversation. And the conversation is around your art. Now, it's really important to not wait to send out a newsletter, right? A newsletter, well, how many of you send out a newsletter? Let me ask that. How many of you are actually sending out a newsletter? What's that look like? Do you do it once a month? Do you do it once a quarter? Do you do it every six months? Maybe once a year or how about never, right? People who are coming to your website and sharing their contact information with you are super interested and what you're doing but then they never hear from you or they only hear from you sporadically so making sure that you have got your website set up so that you are collecting the email information of people is really important right and there are really powerful ways to do this and we're going to go over those yet this morning so that's step one, creating a list, having a list of people who are super excited about what you're doing. These are people who have raised their hands and said, oh yeah, I love what you're doing. I love what you're doing so much that I'm going to share my details with you. And then staying engaged, sending them emails, right? Emails about your art, about what you're doing, super important and really helpful. It can really make a difference in what you're selling and how quickly it sells. A really big difference. In fact, we've put together a system of four emails that can make a sale for your art. And we'll be going over that. But engagement, Talk to these people, send them out emails, let them know what is going on in your creative space, what you're creating, what that looks like. Send them emails, let them know. Give them little sneak peeks behind the scenes of your studio. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, the third one, number three, your offer. Your offer, your offer gets to be your art, right? So sending out emails to the list and letting them know what's going on in your studio and making an offer. Find your art, it's forever home. That forever home is something that is super important. Every artist wants to think about their art hanging on the wall or in the garden or um, if you're a sculptor or a photographer hanging on the wall. Um, if you are a, um, a singer, you want people to be listening to your work, right? And a writer, you want them to be reading what it is that you've written super important staying engaged staying engaged is really important 
And then number four, the fourth one, because this one is really important. Be consistent. Be consistent with the people who are raising their hands to say, I love what you're doing. Now, if you're going on social media and you think that social media is doing everything to um, is doing everything to sell your art, what happens if your account gets shut down? Suddenly, you've lost all of your contacts, right? And you've got to go through the pain. And it it does happen. It happened to a client of mine. Their account was taken over. And we had to go through a tremendous amount of effort in order to get that account back. But while it was lost, there was, oh my gosh, all of the contacts, all of the friends, all of the everything that this client had put together were suddenly gone. It can happen. You can get your account lost or the information in your account can be lost. It's technology. Technology isn't perfect. But there are ways to utilize technology to really help fill in those gaps of things that might happen. And looking at those and making sure that you are taking care of the gaps, filling those gaps, and getting people over to your website is really important. Having a call to action on every post that you have on social media can really help increase the numbers that you have on your list. You can uh, really make a big difference in your offerings that incentivize people to share their email contact with you. And once you have their email contact, you are able to guide the conversation. They already said, I love what you're doing. They already said, oh my gosh, you're amazing. You're so amazing that I want to share my contact information. I hope to hear from you. You know, I have um, just, a little bit uh, about me. I have uh, interviewed hundreds of artists. And every time that I send out an email asking to interview an artist and they email me back, I am just absolutely excited and thrilled. It's a really powerful moment for me. And it's the same for you. Oh my gosh, you know, I heard from um, this particular artist. And that makes a difference if you're engaging with them. Now, I know that there are people who say that social media is the answer, the answer, the answer. But it depends on what the trends are. It depends on what um, the algorithm is. And that's not true when it comes to your website. When it comes to your website, you're the one that gets to treat, treat your website like it's your own social media little hangout. That's really powerful. Utilizing it as your own little place. works really, really well. So 
having a series of emails that are set up so that you are able to create an easy flow to getting these subscribers, right? Because regardless of what you're using for your email collection, you know, uh, MailChimp has got some uh, freebies out there that, that you can use, and they're actually pretty good. Um, if you are using something, um, Faso has got a good data collection for uh, emails. They let you know when you have a new subscriber. If you're using Constant Contact, that's another really good one. For myself, I use Keep. And the reason that I use Keep is because it is so robust. It, it has um, a lot of functionality to it that many artists don't need. But one of the things that it does is that it starts an automation. And everything that we do, everything that I think of is how am I able to help you keep creating while you're running this thriving business? I really want to help make a difference in your creativity, and I really want to help make a difference in your business. Because if you're spending all of your time on your business, then you're not creating. But if you're creating all the time and you're not spending time on your business, that's another problem. So you're in this really big catch-22. And that catch-22 is something that you have to find an answer for if you are an art business. If you're looking to sell your art online, there are real honest-to-goodness steps to go through that will make a difference for you. Let me see here. I want to... Hmm. Okay, um, I, I'm seeing that my chat is disabled um, for this live stream and that's something that I get to figure out um, because I really love to be hearing from you. And what does that look like, right? Um, so I guess I will get to take care of that uh, next time around. Because this is really, it makes a difference in your art business. Now, one of the things that we have done, because I'm always thinking about you, right? I'm always thinking about how can I help support artists? You are my heart. It makes a difference, making a difference in your art business for me. I got started a um, little over a decade ago. And a decade ago, I had decided that uh, because I'm classically trained that I would teach people how to paint online, right? How to classically paint online. And so what I did was um, I learned how to do video editing. I learned how to set up landing pages. I learned how to um, put all of these things together so that there was integration, how to collect emails and what that all looked like. And my friends, this was a decade ago, right? My friends started seeing what I was doing and oh my gosh, um, and Catherine, can you help me? And I really did want to help. And soon I found that I was spending more time helping my friends than I was in taking care of my own online painting business. It made a shift in my business 
because I could see that there were challenges. Technology, big challenge for many artists. So many artists are saying, oh, I don't like technology. I'd be happy if it just went away. And that is a thing that it just isn't going to happen, right? Um, I know that when uh, technology first started, when we first started having home computers, there were uh, people in my life that were saying, oh, it's just a fad. It's a trend. It's going to go away. And I'm going, no, it's not, you know? And then when we started to be able to um, use the internet, I thought, oh my gosh, we are, uh, this is a whole new level, completely whole new level. And I still had, oh, it's a trend. It's going to go away. No, it's not. So now we're in the age of AI as well, right? And that makes a difference in some of the things that we're able to do. You're going to see in the last year, AI has just really come on big. And you're going to see a lot more businesses utilizing different AI platforms for, gosh, there's um, video editing that can take place. And there are... Um, AI writers, um, there are, there's AI for posting on social media, and there's AI for just about everything. And we're in the infancy of AI. This is just the beginning. Remember, oh gosh, uh, 20 years ago when the internet started really hustling and bustling you got your first email address and you're going, oh my gosh, I can't wait to get emails. And now you're going, oh gosh, I got to clean out my, my email box. This is just getting a little bit crazy. I don't know about you, but I get a lot of emails every day. So a decade ago, a little more than that, um, actually we're coming up on 11 years. A decade ago, I started really studying the technology and marketing because we as artists, we don't market like other companies. We don't utilize landing pages, funnels, um, you know, sign up here, do this. There are some artists that do. And they're generally artists that are um, having workshops and, and uh, videos. But for the most part, our process is pretty simple. We're looking for collectors or we're looking for students. Those are the things as artists that we begin to really focus on. And so having this understanding of marketing and then breaking it down so that it was applicable to artists was something that was really super important to me. Because we don't do it like everybody else does. We have something else entirely in mind. But there are principles in marketing that work for artists across the board. Having something valuable to share, to incentivize people to share their email contact information with you. Super important. And for an artist, it is generally something about the process that you're involved in with your art. It's something that uh, you can share your process. Now, when I am talking, I generally am talking to painters, right? Because that's what I am as a painter. But we serve sculptors, we serve um, writers, photographers, musicians. We span the gamut because you're a creative and we get you. We understand. 
And it's one of the things that I think that is super important is to be able to create while you're still running this amazing business. And there is technology out there that makes it really possible. Now, one of the challenges for artists is that generally an artist is a solopreneur. That's what it's called when you are the only one that's running your business. And that was how I started out. I was the only one that was taking care of my business. Every email that was written, every landing page that was created, every video that was edited, um, every everything depended on me. So I was on a shoestring budget and looked for ways that I could take care of things quickly, easily, and inexpensively. So I get it. I understand you're on a budget, right? But there are some things that are super important. And creating this connection with your audience is something that is incredibly valuable. It makes a difference in the amount of art that you're able to sell. It makes a difference in the connection that you have with your audience because you're already a superstar. But then when you are engaged with your audience, you have the opportunity to even elevate even more in your art. And gosh, just for a minute, think about what your ideal life would look like. How would it feel to have every piece of art that you create sold? Oh, I know that there's going to be studies that you create that you're saying, oh gosh, I don't want that ever to be sold. But what about if you were able to sell every piece of art that you finished? What if you had all of your art sold at the price that you have in mind? What would that look like for you? How would that change your life? What would you be doing? Would you continue to, oh my gosh, I can spend more hours in the studio? Because there's some artists that are so consumed that, that that's what they do. Or would you take some of that free time, travel a little bit more? Maybe you just want to spend more time with your family and friends. Maybe that's what's really important. Maybe there's a charity that you'd like to spend some time really diving in deep, right? Because there are so many artists who are really passionate about specific causes. But what if you were able So sorry about that. Didn't want to cough in your ear. Um, what if you were able to do these things that are in your heart? What if you were able to spend more time traveling, more time creating, more time with your family and friends? What about just more time, period? Because when you're running a business and you're really truly running a business, it can take a lot of energy, right? Unless, of course, you have a team. Now, if you've got a team, then suddenly that's a game changer. Because a team makes 
um, light work of heavy things, right? Because you've got more people that are involved in the process and you are able to uh, spread the work out. But even the artists that I know that have teams really are not nurturing their audience, the people that have raised their hands. I'm subscribed to some really big artists and I only hear from them every once in a while. Newsletter. And then it's like this barrage of information, this barrage of paintings that they have that are available or a barrage of images that are in the email or in the newsletter that are um, telling about an offer that they have for a workshop. It's more powerful to have a single image and your offer, and then to get people to go to a specific page on your website. Now, that makes a big difference for artists, really big difference. Using your social media in a specific way really creates more engagement for you. Only the engagement happens over on your website. And this morning, we do have an expert, a marketing expert coming on. Um, she'll be here in about a half an hour, uh, Debbie Lonergan. And she's going to share with us the things that really work as far as marketing, because marketing, whether you are marketing a widget or you are trying to sell your painting or your piece of art. There are specific steps that create greater opportunity. And one of those is by building a following that know, like, and trust you. Well, how do you get them to know you? They can see you on social media. Oh my gosh, I love their work. But once you get them over to your website, they become a different kind of fan, right? Because you have reduced the noise that's happening on social media. So one of the things that I like very much to do is share with you this path here. To creating, um, wait just one second here. Um, let me get myself set up over here. Hmm. Let me see here. Technical issues. Okay. Make sure that I've got all of these over here that I really want so I can share this with you. Okay.
Okay, when someone comes to your website, right, sending them an email back saying, hey, I'm I'm thrilled to make this connection with you. Thank you for stopping by my website. That's all it really needs to say. Having an image of your work, whether you're a painter, a sculptor, uh, whatever you do, having that in your email just really helps make the connection, right? Really helps make a difference. So that's email one. And then email two, and this is four emails to making a sale. Um, you know, share a little bit about your story. What is your story? What does that look like? Now, the thing that I find is much more engaging is to have a video on your about me page a video on your about me page creates that no like and trust much quicker when people are able to see you and hear you it helps make a difference in their ability to um, connect so I love video on your about me page and that makes a huge difference right so sending them an email three days a week later no more than a week because you really do want them to look forward to what you have to say I happen to like to keep email short because I want people to follow a specific call to action. And that specific call to action is to do something. I want to get them back over to my website and I wanna get them back over to my website as quickly as possible. That's like super important. So having them, um, having an, a call to action. What's the call to action? This, here's a bit of my story. I'd love to share a bit of my story with you that's going to take them over to um, my About Me page. That works really well. But I also think that it's important to learn something about the people who love you. It's important to learn something about the people who are providing their email information to you. So I like to ask questions. I'd love to know more about you. Let's really get some engagement going here. And you're going, oh my gosh, you mean I'm going to have to actually answer emails do you want to make sales do you want to live that life that you're dreaming about or do you just want to continue being a starving artist because when we are doing engaging in commerce which is what we're doing when we're trying to sell our art, we are engaging in commerce. And you're going, but I'm just selling a painting or a sculpture or a photograph. Um, I'm just doing something that is really going to benefit the world. And you really are. Because what you do is just like super important. But these people love you. And when you send out emails to them, there's going to be times they're going to email you back. And then making sure that you're engaged in that dialogue. What's that look like, right? So having them go to your about me page, having a video on your about me page makes a difference. It can really build that know, like, and trust really quickly. 
email three, um, email three. is something that you're working on. And again, there's a call to action and the call to action is here to go take a look at this piece that I'm working on and then to show some video. And I know that there's so many artists that are going, I don't know how to do video. Okay, then set up a, 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 a page that has um, images single shot images, progression images of what you're working on. That can really make a difference, right? So this is email number three. What's that look like for you? And this is where the secret sauce happens. It's email number four. Email number four, let's see here. Email number four, well, I guess I get to add that one on there. Email number four is, hey, I finished this piece of art and I'd love to share it with you. and you take them over to a page that has this specific piece of art on it, that they are able to make a purchase. That makes a difference, right? So you tell them that I've finished this piece, you've got the call to action over here, and it takes them back to your website. Really big deal. And you have, oh my gosh, this painting is available, or I love it when you take them to a page and it says, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry this painting sold. but I have some other pieces that are similar and you take them to another page that has paintings that are uh, somewhat similar to what it is that you have, um, what you have created. In four emails, in four emails, you can sell a painting. How long that takes is up to you. Is it three days before you send out your second email? Because you want to respond to your audience in a timely manner, right? Same day, 24-hour responses are really good things. They make a difference. So you want to make sure that you're responding to them in a really steady fashion. It's that number four thing, consistency. Because remember, there's building your list. The larger your list is, the more opportunities that you have to sell that painting in three emails. after the first one, right? So it's four emails to completion of the sale. And is that sending out an email every three days? How long does it take you to produce a finished piece of art? And some artists are really prolific and they're able to do it. Oh my gosh, I can have one done tomorrow afternoon. Well, that might be a little bit quick to offer um, someone a piece of art in like two days. That's a lot of emails for them to get. So you want to space it out, right? But you want to get used to the process. And then having additional emails 
after you've made the sale because you want to keep them close. How many artists have um, the same collector purchasing multiple pieces of art? A lot. I've got one client who he has one collector who has uh, collected like 20 pieces of his art. That's a raving fan. And depending on what you're doing with your art, right? If you are selling just um, uh, originals, then someone has the opportunity to buy one of your originals. If you're doing prints, oh my gosh, you have the ability to sell over and over and over, right? And there are ways to set it up on your website so that you are able to create those opportunities and have someone else do the fulfillment. Setting it up takes a little bit of time, but then it runs on automatic. Somebody comes to your website, they see something that they love, and then they're going, oh my gosh, I've got to have this. And they click, it takes them to your uh, fulfillment link on a uh, external website, right? A print on demand. They get to order what it is that they want. Somebody else does the printing. Somebody else does the mailing. You collect the check. So it depends on the kind of art that you are creating. What's your brand look like? Is your brand uh, one, one, one painting? Or are you doing other products? Like it is uh, March right now. And it is not too early to begin thinking about creating a calendar for 2025. Now, 2025 is going to be, I, I mean, this uh, quarter, a quarter way through the century, right? It's going to be a little nostalgic. Begin thinking of creating a calendar now and you can start selling those calendars in September. And there are lots of ways to create that fulfillment so that you create it once and it continues to sell over and over again. I have one client who does amazing things. She does um, one event every year. And that one event, she paints all year long for it. And that event runs for three weekends, three weekends, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So in 12 days, what she does is she makes all of her sales but she has an opportunity for everyone that walks through that door to make a purchase, to have her art in front of them all year long. And it, it has worked so well for her through the years that people who come in that first year and buy a trivet um, come in the next year and maybe buy a set of cards or a print, or a jacle, working their way up to owning an original. Some of them have a purchase, she has calendars available. Some of them have come in and purchased calendars. And those calendars are something that keeps her art in front of them all year long. 
She also has mugs, right? Is your art something that fits in this particular methodology? Because there's some artists that say, no, I, I'm, I'm a, this kind of artist and I create originals and that's all it is I sell. There are some artists who say, well, I create originals and I have prints made of them and that's what I do. There are some artists who say, um, gosh, I want to give everybody an opportunity to have my art in front of them. Because really what you do is so incredibly valuable and important. What's in your heart what you create from nothing is an inspiration to others in a really powerful way. Really powerful way. You incentivize people. You really help them take a step away from the here and now and submerge themselves into another place in time through your art. I was listening to a podcast not long ago that uh, this gal was talking about a piece of art that she had just been, she had fallen in love with about a decade before. She had gone to an opening and she just, stood in front of this painting and it transformed her. It was a landscape. It transported her to this place of incredible peace. She could feel like she was really there. She felt like she was doing something. She was in a place that was beyond the gallery that she was standing in. And she said, oh my gosh, I have to have this piece of art. She dreamed about that art. It was beyond her ability to afford it. But she said, I have got to have that piece of art. She dreamed about that piece of art. She told people, her friends, eventually she got married. She told her husband about that piece of art. I mean, it was something that just really captivated her. And they were expecting their first child and um, it was their anniversary before this child was born. And her husband wanted to get her this piece of art. So she began doing the homework, right? Um, finding this piece of art and this artist had become uh, really renowned in that particular area in that um, field of study, which was landscape painting. And she found the piece that she had been looking at. And the price point was just beyond her ability to be able to afford. But somebody said something to her, well, why don't you reach out to the artist? She's going, do I dare do that? Oh, why not? What's stopping you? So she took this bold chance and contacted the artist and the artist contacted her back. She was telling this artist, she was raving on and on about this particular piece, wanting to know if she had something similar or available that was similar. The artist ends up taking her to lunch, right? And they're talking about this particular piece of art. And it is something that is really, oh my gosh, incredible. Oh my gosh, right? She's just thrilled to be here with this artist. And this artist says, well, you know, let's go back to my studio. It takes her back to her studio and, you know, she's just 
absolutely thrilled, enthralled, honored to be in the studio. You can just hear it in this podcast, her telling her story. How powerful this was for her. So she goes back to the studio and the artist says, you know, I, I, I really want to make sure that you're able to leave here today with a piece of my art that fits into your price point. Because having such a fan is really an incredible honor. And to know that my art has found its forever home and to know it you is something really powerful. So she walks in and though the painting that that this woman had been wanting, looking for, um, had sold. This artist created something that was very similar and was able to offer it to, to this um, particular person for an incredible, an incredible price. Um, let's see here. I. I'll, Hold on. I believe that we have. I believe that we have Debbie Lonergan here. I am. Hi, Debbie. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to rename you here. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, well, I really love for you to share with our audience marketing. What's that look like for an artist? You're a marketing specialist. It's what you do. What does that look like? And what can an artist do to help improve their sales? What's that look like for an artist? Um, honestly, I, I have to tell you, it's it's if art if the if the act of art is of course artistry, but there is a business side of it, and all businesses kind of need the same thing. They they need obviously the customers. So to get those customers, um, and the digital age, you know, there's there's four components that that we want to um, just basic, you know, components that we're going to start with. And that would be um, building a list, uh, which means an email list. So not, um, you know, you don't need to take names at doors of galleries or stuff. We're talking about email lists and, um, and then you create engagement with those people who, whose emails you have collected and then um, creating offers, you know, what what would be something that that they would want to buy, and then being consistent with with communicating with with that list. So those are four basic pillars of of marketing. Um, you know, you can think of the businesses that do it really well. Um, you know, McDonald's. You know, of course, you know they they can create, you know, you know what you're going to get when you get there, you, it's brand recognition. There's, there's a lot of things that they do, but um, one of the things that they do really well is create, you know, the, the, the consistency and engagement, you know, they're always doing stuff like that. So we don't have to be McDonald's. So, um, <laughs> you know, so um, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm going to turn the the um, mic on over to you so that you can really share with us and dive in deep about what it can look like for an artist for us. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I'll just start with what I call like, you know, the four basic, you know, the foundation, maybe not the four pillars, but it's the foundation of getting involved with um, any kind of, online marketing is and and the first thing is emails now you'll hear people say email is dead it's never gonna die <laughs> it's never gonna go away it's always gonna be there it's um 
it, I, I'm hoping it, it will get better. Uh, but that is your direct communication with people. Social media is kind of like um, like a community garden where you know you can go and you can plant your flower, your vegetables, and your grow some lettuce. But if somebody sells the property out from underneath you, there you know you you don't have any ownership of it. So social media followers is kind of like that community garden. If they change the rules, if they shut down, you've lost all your followers. Emails, however, if you get the, get them in your own email list and you, it's like owning, you know, like planting a garden in your backyard, you know, you, you get to decide what you grow and, you know, nobody can take that access away from you. So, um, you know, when you're creating a list um, that you, you have to, you know, give people a reason to give you their email address. You know, we've all been there, been to a website, and the first thing we get there, and you know, something pops up and wants their email address, and it's like, well, why? What are you? What are you going to give me? So there, there is a an art to it. No pun intended. <laughs> um, but you want to maybe offer. You know, you you do want to offer something of value. So it doesn't necessarily mean you have to give them something. It can be. Um, exclusive content or early access to your work or you know kind of like present it as as um you're building a community and you know people who are who um share their email address with me uh, will see my works of art early or have early access for when it goes uh you know when i when i when it's done and i offer it for sale or um you can offer you know uh, uh, inside peek at your studio for people who sign up. So there's a little bit of a, Hey, if you, you know, sh if you're willing to share your email address with me, you know, this is what I'm going to give you because, you know, I appreciate that you've done that for me. And then, um, and then you want to move on to um, engaging with them. So once you have their email address, you're going to want to it uh, be con well. Consistency is kind of the last thing that we're going to talk about, but you do want to start emailing them. You want to um, give them something that makes them want to open the the email. So if they know that you're sharing some of your techniques or an inside peek in your studio or whatever, you know, you're you're creating content that makes them want to open the email and see, wow, or especially pictures that because, you know, you're, you're working on art, you know, people love, love to look at that. Um, so, but you engage and are consistent with them. So it creates a rapport and they become, and, and hopefully encourage them to respond uh, when, if you have them, if you have people, that's like the golden standard. If you have people replying to your emails, they, it shows that, that you're making them feel seen and heard and it's interactive. Um, it helps build a stronger relationship. It increases loyalty and trust with you. And it gives, um, it, it gives you a solid following, a more solid following. Um, so one of the, some of the things that you can do to engage is, you know, provide exclusive content and ask for feedback. Um, there are ways also to, uh, segment it. So if, if maybe you do sculpting and you also, um, use a pottery wheel, you know, you've got two different, two different people might be interested in those things. So there's ways that you can segment the list so that when you have a new vase that you threw, I hope I'm using the right terminology, uh, then you can, you know, send it, an email out to those people. But if you have people who are interested in your sculpting and you've created a new piece for that, then you, you target them. So uh, some of the things that you can do to engage. Um, and then the other thing when you have this following, you know, when you've got your list and then you've engaged with them, then you can start creating offers. So your offer can be, um, uh, obviously you'd like them to buy your art. Uh, so you can um, 
offer a sale or, you know, for like first dibs when, you know, when the piece is finished, um, you know, if they're watching you through your emails, if you're, if you're talking about the piece you're creating and you're emailing them and then you say, oh, and it's done, ta-da, that can be your offer. Um, but it can also be, you know, um, I'm cleaning out my space and I for for more work. And so if you buy a painting, I'm also going to include a print for you. Or those are the kinds of offers that we're um creating so that people can buy from you right right via your emails and or website. Um and then, you know, and then we're back to engagement. Um you can provide, you know, exclusive content. Wait, I'm sorry. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I wanted to talk about consistency. <laughs> so you also want predictable engagement. Um, you want to create kind of the same voice so that you're, um, they feel like they're conversing with you. They're getting to know you as an artist and you don't want to use canned emails and, um, or have somebody else write them for you. You you really want to use your own voice. Um, not to say that somebody can't write in your voice. That can be done too. That's that's for another time. Um, but you really want to build the trust and reliability that, that that they're getting to know you. That you're not all about sales. You are about your art, and I and being consistent and sending emails on a regular basis and also posting in social media, um, it creates a brand around you. Um, so part of cons being consistent is, you know, you want to set a reliable schedule. You want to plan your content out in advance. You want to automate where possible, which is something I love to do. Um, you, we, you know, I, I typically will set up um, a month of emails in advance, and then they they go out on schedule. Um, and uh, you know, if something's going on, you know, just communicate and let let them know. So if something is happening in your life and you're not going to be around, you know, just people people understand that people like to know that you're people, and so just tell them. That's the best kind of email, in my opinion, is is one that really shows that you're. Um, you know, a person with a personal life and, you know, things, good things, and maybe even sometimes not great things are happening. So you want to engage with them at that level. Uh, so, Debbie, um, you said something that was um, the offer, you know, uh, I really like that a lot. Uh, someone buys a painting and if you buy now, uh, you're going to be uh, getting a print for, for um, I'm going to throw that in for you. Um, because there are ways for an artist to clean out their studio, right? To um, have people incentivized to purchase of pieces that have been sitting around for way too long that have not found their forever home. Mm -hmm. And uh, what are different marketing? And I know that so many artists don't like that word uh, marketing, um, but what are different marketing strategies that an artist might utilize along those lines? Cause I, I love the, the um you buy now and i'm gonna throw in something extra are there other things that you can think of for an artist to be able to um help incentivize people to buy their work um yeah so you know a free smaller print with every original sold a discount on future purchases a uh, personalized sketch uh, i don't know if that's possible but some <laughs> Um, and also, you know, like, like, um, you know, in future, I don't, I don't want to say discounts, but first dibs on buying future 
so not necessarily, I don't want everybody to think that you have to discount your work, um, but you, you can give them, you know, like people like being VIPs, you know, if, if you buy, you know, during the month of March, you get first dibs on my, you know, work, you know, my, all the work that I did on my Italian vacation or whatever, <laughs> you know, so people, if you, if you can give them some kind of, um, you know what FOMO is. Everybody knows what FOMO is, fear of missing out. If you give them some sort of expiring it, it or uh, incentive, it helps them, um, you know, get off the fence. Because a lot of people think, oh, you know, that's pretty, but I, I, you know, I'm not sure. And But when you give them that incentive that might disappear, you know, in, in two days or two weeks, then it helps them, you know, just make the decision to to buy, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, when you've got something that expires, it's just like, um, I mean, I do a lot of marketing of events and people, you know, some sometimes people get upset that, you know, oh, we, you know, we launched last week and, you know, nobody's registered. But then three days before or two days before, sometimes even the day of, everybody registers. When you give people a deadline, they sometimes wait till the end of the deadline. So keep your deadlines kind of short um, so that you, it, it just helps make pe people make decisions. You know, I'm looking at it right now. If I walk away, I'm going to forget about it. And then I'm going to lose this bonus, whatever it is. Um, so let me just do it now. So it just helps people get off the fence. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, because the artists have got um, a product that um, it's a luxury item, right? Yeah. So um, it's not required for people to have it in order to eat, put a roof over their head or get from A to B. Um, what are some strategies that they can use to help create the content that is going to help them sell their work. Content is in content for email marketing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Email marketing, but also so social media, you know, cr crossing those two platforms because well, one of the things that you and I had talked about is the call to action, right? Um, the call to action for an artist is, is something that, um, I see a gazillion posts coming across social media mm -hmm. and uh, typically what an artist does is if they have a painting that they have finished, they have the name of the painting, the size, and um, that's usually it. And no, no way for me as the viewer to to buy it or access it yeah yeah, yeah. so yes so or if you're interested in this dm me you know um that's that's you know if there is a cta it's it's very very ambiguous very weak yeah i i think every interaction with a list or a follower should have one point and one thing to do so look at this painting. Here's how you buy it. You know, there should always be, and not look at this painting, visit my website. Oh, I've got a gallery opening next week. And oh, you can buy it too. That's three things. Now, those are all good things. Pick one. Um, so yeah. So everything, every email, every social media post should have one call to action and, and it should be pretty, you know, easy. Um, I know Instagram, you know, I, I see a lot of people say, you know, if you um, message me this word of, you know, they've got an automation that that sends back a link. So, you know, you can have a link to your website. Um, you have to have some place where uh, even if you if you typically sell in galleries, there should be some way that people can purchase online without having to DM you. Um, so I would set up some sort of online uh, you know, uh, even a simple website, it, almost any website nowadays, you can have some sort of sales and then paste the link to the item in your um, 
store on your website. So um, here's something that many artists struggle with because they're solopreneurs, right? And yeah. they're the only one that is doing everything. Plus they've got to keep creating because if they don't create, they don't have, they don't have anything to sell. They don't have anything to offer. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're now in a very uh, robust digital age and being able to utilize automation is um, something that is powerful, but an artist who is generally um, on a budget, yes. they have got challenges with, uh, with utilizing some of those really expensive products. Um, well, I, there's a couple of people I'm following right now that are telling me that you should learn how to do it all. And I, I have to say, I don't agree with that. There's just too much to know. Uh, you can't be an expert at anything, every, everything. And sometimes technology is just not your forte. So honestly, I feel like what one of the, one of the products that you've built that it's, it's a, it's a great price point and it's, um, and it's all set up and it has enough customization so that it'll feel personal to the to the artist is sending it out to her list, help them build the list. And it, it does all of the four things that we talked about. Uh, and I don't think that you need, I don't think everybody needs to know how to be a digital marketer. I, just like everybody doesn't know how to be, need to know how to be a watercolor artist. It's it's a beautiful thing to do. And I'm sure as artists, yeah, I actually kind of like art on the side too, but I I don't try to make a living from it because it's, I, I'm, I, it's not my, it's not my profession. It's just something I dabble in. Whereas artists, you know, don't try to like you wouldn't expect me who dabbles in watercolors to have a gallery opening <laughs> so don't try to be your own digital marketer i mean there are things that everybody every business owner has to do but i just don't think that you have to learn how to manage all the technology i think there are like the product that you've built is is accessible and has all the components and um it will save them a lot of time and energy, you know, trying to figure things out. Debbie's talking about the automatic artist. And um, actually, it was something that I was going to um, share with you guys after we got done, after Debbie and I got done talking, because she is an expert um, in marketing. And um, I'm so happy to say that she is one of my go-to girls. She is um so amazing in everything that um that she does and uh she is part of the automatic artist really um the foundation of it because it does require automation and she is an automation specialist um so i'm, I'm pulling the rug out from underneath sorry <laughs> i didn't have to spill the beans <laughs> <laughs> I be really believe in giving credit where credit is due, right? I mean, that's super important. And I don't want anyone to think that, oh, um, I did this all by myself um, because I didn't. I couldn't have done this all by myself. Um, it's exactly that thing that Debbie is talking about is um, relying on someone who is an expert. Now, the passion behind it, you know, helping artists to um, do something that is a sore spot in their business, that is something that is really challenging for them. Um, that was definitely uh, something that I think about them all the time, and I know that it's a struggle for them. So I really wanted to create something that was going to help them at a price point that they could afford, right? I, I mean, um, I know that there are lots of people out there going, hey, artists, I got something for you over here, but it's going to cost you a bazillion bucks, right? And uh, that isn't what I have in my heart to do. I have it in my heart to serve 
um, artists at a place that meets them um, as an entrepreneur, you know, that single, that single person that helps them to continue to create, but still takes care of the challenges that they have as far as um, answering those emails, getting that engagement going, because what's the difference in sales that you see as an expert that for someone that is um, engaging just in social media, as opposed to someone who is able to utilize their email list to um, create uh, sales and engagement. What, it, do you see a big difference in them or is it just something that I actually don't work with a lot of people that use only social media, so I couldn't really comment on that. But I will say that there are lots of marketing gurus, email marketing gurus that I follow that 20 years ago, they said that every email address on your list is worth $2 a month. <laughs> and that was 20 years ago that they were saying that. So I don't know if they've updated that, but if you can say, if you consistently interact with your list and you consistently have offers, you can't just email them and not have offers. So, uh, cause I do have clients who do that and then there, there isn't a lot of sales. So you have to engage with them and, and you can, yeah. So if you have, you know, think about it, if you have a list of 500 people, $2 a month, $1,000 a month, you know, so if you have $1,000 a month sale, like how much is that worth to you? I mean, yeah. and that's, and that's, like I said, 20 years ago numbers, it could be worth $5. I haven't looked that statistic up recently, but if you can, if you interact with your list and, and they know to con that opening your emails is going to bring what they're looking for into their lives. You know, I don't open emails from people who are just blathering. You know, I open, I open the emails that, I know from people I know are giving me something I value and your collectors, you know, collectors are going to value seeing a work of art in progress. I mean, who wouldn't love that? <laughs> <laughs> it really is something that is amazing. You know, as um, an artist myself, I love watching other artists. Oh, create, yeah. Right. You know, it's something that is super, um, inspiring and it teaches me a lot and I know that it's not just another artist that wants to watch uh, someone creating them people um, when I've done plein air painting and I'm set up somewhere outside the throngs of people that come by and and want to engage and talk about what it is I'm doing what I'm seeing and and what that looks like is amazing right um, sometimes it's, uh, there are some artists that are going, uh, I want to be working, you know, um, and there are ways to handle that. Um, are there things that I haven't said that, um, in those four foundational elements that we've been talking about that can make a difference for an artist, you know, outlining a, a um, um, what it might look like for them uh, as far as um, creating a stream of information that helps them to lead to that cell. Because I, it, it, that doesn't feel icky. Right. Because uh, that's where artists have the problem. They're going marketing. It just makes me feel yucky. Right. And well, market, so I'd like to clarify marketing versus sales. Sales is sales. Might, I think people mix them up. You know, marketing is letting people know you're here. Sales is calling them up and saying, buy this. So we're not doing that. Um, you know, if you, I'm trying to think of a good example, if, you know, 
if you didn't know, if you were starving and you didn't know the grocery stores around the corner, marketing is what tells you that the grocery store is there. You just have to go and get food so you don't starve to that. So it's a service. Marketing to me, and, and I had to say, I'm a reluctant marketer myself. I, I don't do sales. I do marketing. I'm not a big, you know, I'm not, um, I'm just, it's not my personality, I guess, sales. But marketing is letting just letting people know that you're there Uh, and there's things that it's it's a service there's people out there looking for you and if you sit there behind your easel and never say look at what I've got then they're never going to know you're there so marketing is just about awareness it's not about pushing on anything on anybody that they don't want you know I I don't want to I don't want to tell anybody to buy, you know, I don't want to push people to buy something that they don't want, but if they do want it, you know, look, here it is. So um, I forgot the question. (laughs) So I know people think marketing is icky, but marketing is actually a service. It really is. I mean, we're not, we're not pushing people to, you know, they, the digital marketing age allows us to target um people who are interested in what we have to offer that's why social media has is make as how they're making money is that th- now they know when you, oh you clicked on that you might be interested in this as well they're not trying to sell me you know a red sports car i i'm not interested in red sports cars but you know they're trying to sell me artwork cuz that's what i click on or clothes or you know i don't know Other, you know, so you artists need to find those people too. They need to find the people who are clicking on artwork. Um, So social media can help with that. But when you get the email, their their contact, then they know. Then you know that they're interested in you. It's like having a direct phone line to them, as opposed to shouting across a crowded room. You know. I like that. I I like that uh, analogy. Um, Yeah, because who wants to be shouting across a crowded room, right? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Hey, you over there. Um, Yeah, that's a wonderful way to look at it, right? That um, having the letting them letting people know that you're out there that you exist is something that is important right yeah and, and that's so uh, webs you're having your own website um that's why etsy is doing as well as doing as well as it is and i i know that's a sensitive subject on a lot of our forums but they built you don't when you build a website you need to get people to it when etsy brings people to to your shop of course they take a big chunk of it which is you know and they've got other issues but um so if you have a website which i recommend you know then you need something to bring people to it and that's where what catherine's built helps it it brings people to you as well as um as well as to your art you know, that's something um, because I've been for the last um, over a year have been talking about the importance of an artist having their own website, right? Um, as opposed, because I have met artists on LinkedIn who, um, no, I don't have a website. And I'm going, really? I, I mean, are you actually, is this a hobby for you or are you making your living as an artist, right? And um, what's the difference for an artist that is using social media almost exclusively? Why, well, you know, I read this person, they said, I don't need a website. Um, I, I can do everything that I need to do on social media. Yeah, but if that, I mean, I I know people, you know, that have lost access to their Facebook pages or Instagram. I'm I'm not sure about LinkedIn, Um, but if and and through nothing that they did, you know, it's not even like they did something, but 
the Facebook algorithm or somebody spoofed their site and Facebook shuts down the wrong one. And, you know, once you lose that, you know, I actually somebody, who was it? Somebody I know just had 10 years of her Facebook, like it, she'd had an account for 10 years and had something like, five, you know, I think Facebook is 5,000 followers and all of it was gone. She had to start all over. And I just wouldn't want to see anybody have to do that. If if you're if you're engaging with those 5,000 followers, they've come over to your, they visited your website to see what you have to offer. And then you can keep their, you know, keep their email address. So if something ever happened like that, again, you could just email them and say, hey, my my Facebook account was compromised. Please join my Facebook, you know, page again, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and something like that. So mm -hmm. it's really having your own website. It it's it's about you having control and not being, uh, you know, kind of subject to whatever platform rules change and you know, um. And, you know, putting things, keeping keeping it fresh, you know, doing your own videos. You can just do so much on your own website that you can't do on social media. Well, you just said something that's a hot button for me, video, you know, because um, I am definitely a video girl. Um, it's something that is super important. I think that it's really important for an artist because um, people are so curious about what they're doing and what that looks like, right? How do you, what do you think about video and what do you see in your marketing um, for uh, your clients that are using video as opposed to those that don't? Um, yeah, the video, the engagement with video is, is just people, um, you have three seconds to capture somebody's attention when you go get on when they get on your website so a well a video welcome with a real human being especially an artist talking that's going to keep people there and and then you know once you know it's a, above the fold so um marketing speak but when you're looking at when you get to a website first thing you see is considered above the fold once you scroll that's considered below the fold so if you can have a video above the fold that uh so depending on the and i'm not a big fan of autoplay but sometimes it's appropriate depending on who your audience is to have it ha just have it start playing and not loud obnoxious music or screaming or anything but you know you talking and saying you know hey welcome to my website you know you should see what i'm working on you know it's engaging and it almost feels like hanging up on somebody you know which <laughs> I, in this day of telemarketing sometimes we do but and you, you know you visited their site so you you want to hear what they have to say once you're there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. video is great yeah video i i find especially for an artist because people are so curious about them and and i don't think that artists recognize that you know, they're so used to being in their studio where they're um, pushed away from the rest of the world and they're just in their creative space and they um, don't know how curious people really are about them. And so uh, the video is something that really makes a huge difference in helping to connect them with um, their audience, you know, and so it's something that I'm always encouraging artists. I'm encouraging you um, mm -hmm. to make your videos. And um, if there are only three platforms that an artist has, what do you think that those platforms could, should um, be that will serve them the most and why? Uh, well, definitely Instagram, just because it's so visual. Um, and Isn't then it harder to do um, links? marketing on Instagram because there's no hot links that are allowed in posts and and isn't it harder to get people over away from Instagram because of that it it is yeah, so it's kind of a catch-22. It's so visual 
but yes, you can have links. So, um, but you can have a link on your profile. So if people are seeing, that's where the consistency comes in. If people are seeing you and seeing your stuff, they can go to your profile. They'd be like, oh, who is this person? Or, you know, they follow you and, and they can go to your profile and then they can link to your website mm -hmm. from your profile. And then of course there is, um, there are some automations, but I think you have to have a business account and you have to have a certain number of followers before you can activate um, some of those um, automations. Uh, so, you know, I, I, don't do a lot with social media. Um, I know I, so I can't really speak to uh, TikTok and, you know, TikTok is also very visual, but it's very video. I don't think, you know, so if you're, if you're doing video, you might as well put it on TikTok mm -hmm. um, and then LinkedIn, because um, there's a statistic, the average Facebook user it has an income of $30,000 a year and the average LinkedIn user has an, uh, an average income of, I think it's $70,000 a year. So if you're on LinkedIn, you know, people have more disposable income there. So. You know, and that's one of the things that uh, there are a few artists um, on LinkedIn. It is one of the platforms that, that I utilize. Um, and the artists that I that I see that I follow on LinkedIn, um, their presence is usually more profound than uh, the ones that I am seeing on um, Facebook. You know, Facebook is like. Mm, is like um uh, like a um uh, neighborhood gathering you know and uh linkedin is like an invited kind of party you know mm -hmm. um yeah. that you uh, once you receive the invitation to appear you're just going oh you know and not that you have to be invited to linkedin it's just that um that's the analogy of how i'm seeing it um because uh, Facebook is, uh, there are things that I love about that platform. The ability for engagement there is so much greater and mm -hmm. higher without a lot of restrictions. And an artist is able to utilize that platform um, in some pretty profound ways to um, really attract the people that um, they're interested in if they are um these are the ones that i like to use a pet portrait painter um or a um, landscape painter of a particular uh, area you know it's easy to target those areas so that they're able to uh, create more sales so um well, and then you can hyperlink to anything and it gives a thumbnail automatically of whatever you're hyperlinking to. So, yeah, then you don't have to worry about putting in an image and, you know, there it is right there for you uh, immediately. So, um, yeah. Is there something that um, we haven't talked about that you think, oh my gosh, um, every um, artist should know this? Um, I, I would, I would say, don't, don't be afraid to offer your work up. People are not like, I'm thinking, you know, you made me think about, you know, who do I follow? You know, what artists do I follow? And, uh, there's one actually it's my financial planner, his wife is an artist and he posts her work all the time and it's beautiful. I don't think I've ever seen a link to buy it. When you started talking about it, I was like, what if she's like, here I am a marketer. I'm like, I wonder if they're selling it. Yeah. Uh, so I think post your work because it's beautiful and we love seeing it, but offer us a way to buy it. Offer us a way to buy it. 
you know, you're sharing something of yourself. Like, you know, when I post a picture of, you know, my kids or an event that we went to, it's it, I'm sharing myself. When you're sharing your work, you're sharing even more of yourself. It's beautiful for us to look at. And, and you know, it's, but it's also your living. So make sure you're offering people a way to buy it. Yeah, that's, that is great advice. You know, it's that call to action, right? I mean, yeah. that's the thing. It's, it's uh, um, making sure that people have, are incentivized or have the information in front of them that they're able to click this link to go here to learn more or to make that purchase or whatever it is that looks like, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Debbie, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. It's um, uh, hearing it from an expert, right? That crosses so many different um, niches is really powerful for all of us to hear because understanding the dynamics of marketing and being able to distinguish between marketing and selling. Um, that was a big one. That, that was a really big one for me. So I really appreciate you um, sharing that one. Okay. Uh, that great insight. So um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Okay. 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 I know you've got things to do and, and <laughs> go and enjoy them. And thank you for taking the time. Okay, thanks. Okay. Sure. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. So um, I just want to thank Debbie again for being here. She is just really phenomenal. She really is, uh, she knows her stuff in a really profound way. And to be able to utilize that information for us as artists, right, is something that uh, will make a difference in the way that we're presenting our work. One of the things that she said, and it's something, and she said it so succinctly, she said it as a collector, right? Um, she used the, the example, and it's one that I'm going to use in the future. And it was one that I used earlier. You've got a piece of art for sale. And then Usually what I see in a post is the name of the painting, maybe, uh, the size of the canvas, and the medium that is used. And many times, that's the only information that's available. Now, if it's something, now there, are, um, I'm thinking of a particular client, and that is, um, used to be the way that he would post, um, but now when he is creating these posts, if it is available in one of his galleries, he is making sure that um, that information is um, there. So um, making sure that we have a way for people to follow through, not just admire. That's really important. Um, that's really important. It's a little tiny thing, but it can make a huge difference in the amount of sales that you have. Now, I love the idea of clearing out the studio. Let's have a studio sale. You know, what is there in your studio that you've been wanting to find a forever home for that's still sitting there? What's the incentive that you can give someone um, for making a purchase of your art? If you're anything like me, um, it's very possible that you have got multiple paintings sitting around or multiple pieces of art that have not yet found their forever home. And that makes a difference, right? So a uh, studio sale, um, let's do that. But Debbie was talking about something that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, this was a nine month project, nine months. And we have uh, finally unveiled it. And uh, 
it is a way for us to be able to help artists in a big way, in a really profound way, um, to make these connections that we're talking about, to take care of the four things, right? The three things that are really what this particular workshop are about, that is your list, engaging with your list, and making an offer. But also that fourth thing that's really important is consistency. So we've created something that is really super powerful and that can really make a difference in um, the way that you are meeting people, greeting people who are coming to your website. So we have put together the automatic artist. And the automatic artist is a way for you to create contact with people who are coming to your website. And let me just, I will make sure that at the end of this, that I will put in the link to the automatic artist. Um, but let me just share my screen. So this is the automatic artist and it's really a blueprint for success for an artist. It really does make a difference. And we have focused on helping you to create sales in just four emails, right? Um, and let me make this bigger. There we go. In just four emails, you can make a sale that is going to make a difference in your art business. And we've designed the automatic artist so that people that come to your site are able to be greeted after about 10 seconds or so, a pop-up appears on your, um, on your screen, on your site. And it, oh, let me show you. Let me stop this share. And let me... Start this here. So someone comes to your to your site, right? This is my particular page on the automatic artist, right? And I because I believe in it so much, I have a video. You can click on the video and uh, it begins to um, tell you about me, right? And there are a few different uh, uh, pieces of art that I have on the site that represent some of my work. But after somebody's been there for about 10 seconds, an invitation to stay connected is really presented to them. And it's not sign up for my email list um, or sign up for my um, newsletter. It's let's stay connected. And you're collecting information from them. It's their first name, their last name, their email address and their phone number. And why do we collect their phone number? There are a lot of marketers today, a lot of people who are marketing that are utilizing text. And it's not to say that you are going to start texting everybody, right? Because that, if you're automating that, that's a different technology that makes a difference, but it's also one that costs as well. Unless, of course, you want to sit there with your thumbs going, you know, for hours and hours, um, sending out uh, text to these individual phone numbers. But it's information that you have, right? Making sure that you have this information is super important, very valuable. You might not use it today, but you're going to use it 
in the future? What if you have a uh, gallery opening and you're saying, oh my gosh, I really want to make sure that everybody is uh, in the know about my one person show. I want to make sure that they get the invite and I'm sending this off to them. You'll need that phone number. It makes a difference. So the first email, uh, as I talked earlier, the first emails, thank you for coming by. A piece of your art that's representative of what you do. Thank you for stopping by. And, you know, you want to see more of my art? Click here. It takes them directly over to your gallery. All of your information is here, right? Your, uh, your email address, your website address, the links to your social media. And there's always three social medias that I highly recommend. Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. For an artist, those are three platforms that really serve you really well. And then email number two. Email number two, oops, um, email number two is you want to share your story with these people. So having a, an email going out to them, but it's not just enough to uh, have them learn your story. You want to make sure that you're asking them specific questions about themselves too, because you're looking to create engagement. The more that they know, like, and trust you, the more likely they are to want to become a part of your community and share their views with you, feedback with you, and make your art a forever home in their particular home, right? So having a way to learn more about you, to know, like, and trust you really early is something that having your video on your About Me page really serves you. And then to send out another email that lets them know that, um, oh my gosh, um, I'm working on this piece. I'd love to give you a behind the scenes peek and so that you're able to see what is going on. And then a, an additional email that says, oh my gosh, this, I don't happen to have it right here, I don't believe. Nope. Um, a, a, another email that has a um, follow-up. Hey, this piece is done. I'd love to pull back the curtain and let you see what it is that has been created. And um, then take them over to your website. You have the opportunity to make a sale in four emails. You can set the time on this. Um, gosh, I have a new piece of art every two weeks, or I've got a new piece of art once a month that I have available to sell, um, you can set the timer on this. And you also get notifications. Hey, um, you know, somebody, uh, we just got a visitor from your website. You get a notification. You learn who that particular uh, new contact is. And then um, we let you know that, gosh, that person, a person has looked at your work in progress. So you really know what is going on. It's not left to the imagination. You have real feedback about what's happening on your website because we have set it up with automation. And the really good part is that we have made this really affordable for you. We have set it up so that you can get started for just $15 a month. And there is not automation out there available for less than hundreds of dollars, uh, $100 a month. I believe that there's one that's out there 
very limited in its scope of what it is able to do for $99 a month. We have put this together. We have built it in order to serve you. We want to help. We want to help you build your list. We want to help you stay engaged. And we want to help you with your offer so that your art finds its forever home. We want to help you be consistent. Those are the four things that are really super important. We want to help with that. So I hope that this has been helpful for you. Go over to artistsondemand.net and you can see what we have put together. I will put to get put the link into this video um, as soon as it is uh, finished, as soon as we're finished here, so that you can just simply click on it and go and create an opportunity for yourself to build your list, to stay engaged, create an offer that helps your art find its forever home and helps you be consistent. So thank you for being here. And thank you, Debbie Lonergan, for being here. I really appreciate it. And um, I look forward to hearing from you. I love your feedback. So have yourself a magnificent day and go create something beautiful. And we will be doing this again soon.